Hey everyone! In this video, I'd like to continue working off this problem that I started in the last video. This is problem 53 of our first week's assignment. And I want to just continue this conversation, hopefully lead you guys to that right answer. So when we last left uh, the video, we understood that we had some matching angles here, and that we had some matching angles here, and that we ended up creating some similar triangles. Okay, so I just want to build off of that. Now, the question that we are trying to figure out is, is that we want to tell Ricky how can he shoot the ball. And there's two things that we need to find out. We need to first figure out what the angle is for the ball. So think up here, right? This is the angle here that I'm marking. We want to tell him what angle to hit that ball at. And the second piece of information is where should he place the ball, right? We need both of those pieces of information so that he can recreate uh, Montana Mike's shot okay so what I'd like to do is I'm going to erase this uh, mirror diagram so that I can do some work underneath this pool table so we need to figure out some key pieces of information here okay so what I want you guys to realize is we last identified that this angle here and this angle here matched right it was as if light was hitting the mirror and bouncing off so these two angles have the same value. We rec also recognize that right here, right? That this green angle here and this green angle would also have to be equal. Now I want you to take a second and think about this right triangle here. Okay, this right triangle here. I know that I have my right angle here, I have this magenta angle, and I have this green angle. Well, going over to this triangle here, I also have the right angle, okay? I also have this magenta angle, which would mean then that this top angle would also have to be this green angle, right? Because if you know that this, these two triangles have matching right angles and matching magenta angles, it kind of forces this third angle to be the same. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark this guy green and with the one hash mark because I want those two angles to be the same. I know that they're the same. Also, because we know that they're similar triangles, right? We discovered last in the video that they were similar by AA similarity, okay? And now I also want you to think about this triangle here and this triangle here. We can use that same principle, right? They both have the right angle. They both have the green angle, which means that these two angles here kind of forces them to be the same. So now I know that this angle up here is going to be this magenta angle in the other two triangles, okay? So if there is some way that I can find out this information for the angles in let's say this triangle, and if I can find the value of one of these angles here, then I'm gonna be able to apply that to this angle up here, okay? So let's go ahead, and what I would like to do is I'd like to redraw this left triangle here that we see, the left-right triangle. All right, so let me go ahead and draw that out. My best recreation of that triangle. I knew that this was a right angle, okay? And now I want us to think about, oh, actually, let me go ahead and label my, my angles. This is my magenta angle. That is my green angle, okay? And so what I want us to think about is I want us to figure out if we can get any side lengths, right? If I knew a side length, then what I could use is my trig functions, right? Sine, cosine, tangent. I could use those to find the angle, but I can't use sine, cosine, or tangent unless I know some side lengths. And I think we can actually find out some side lengths. So I want you to think about this side here, right? The left side of this right triangle. That is this distance here. It's the width of the pool table. Well, if I go over to the right side here, I see that the width of the pool table is 50 inches. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark this side now as 50 inches since this distance here is 50 inches. So cool, we got one side length. All I need to do now is be able to find one more side length and then I could use some inverse cosine, sine, tangent to figure out what my angle is, okay? And so my next step is, is I'm actually gonna wanna try to find this bottom side length, 
Now I want to go back to what the problem said. The problem said that Montana Mike placed the ball somewhere, that he shot the ball, it banked off the right side, and then it's very specific. It says that the ball hits this bottom side at the third diamond right here. This is the third diamond. So if we can use that fact to find out how long this is, then we'll be able to use that number on this triangle here. So I want us to think about this bottom side. This bottom side here is 100 inches long, right? 100 inches long. So if I'm looking here at the halfway mark in this pocket here, that would mean that the halfway mark would have to be 50 inches, right? Because the whole length is 100 inches. The halfway mark would be half of that, 50. So now I want us to think about I have this, I'm starting here at this edge. I'm going this distance over here to 50 inches. Well, what if I meet in the middle at this second diamond? If I'm looking at how far from the edge of my pool table to this mark, it would have to be half of 50 inches. And half of 50 inches is just 25 inches, okay? So I want you to think about this. Now we know that the length of two diamonds is 25 inches. But I wanna try and figure out what the length of three diamonds are. So what I think we wanna figure out is, is what is the distance between the edge of the pool table to one of the diamonds? And we can figure that out because since two lengths, right, two of those lengths make 25, if I wanna find just what one is, I just gotta take 25 and divide it by two. So 25 divided by two gives us a distance of 12.5 inches, okay? 12.5 inches. That means every time we move one set of diamonds over, we're going 12.5 inches. So, okay, I wanna tie this all in, right? I want to figure out what the length of this bottom right triangle is. Well, the length of this bottom right triangle ends up being, let's see if we can count this out. I'll use a highlighter here. We, we go a distance of one diamond, two diamonds, three diamonds, four diamonds, and five diamonds. Okay, we go a distance of five diamonds. So that just means to figure out what that length is, I just have to take 12.5 and multiply that by five. I'll do that off to the side over here. 12.5 times five. And that gives us an answer of 62.5 inches, right? Because every set of diamonds is 12 and a half inches. So now I know that this bottom guy is 62.5 inches, okay? Now, Again, we want to figure out what one of these angles are. Specifically, we want to figure out what this magenta angle is. Because if I find this magenta angle here, then I know what the magenta angle is up here. Well, if I'm focusing on this angle, let's go ahead and call this guy theta. Well, let's figure out what trig identity we want to use. Well, here's where theta is. This would be my opposite side. This is my hypotenuse. This is my adjacent. Well, what uses O and A? Take a second to think through, right? If you remember our hint, Sokotoa, what makes us use O and A? I believe that we wanna use tangent. So tangent of my angle theta equals my opposite side over my adjacent side. So tangent of theta equals 50 over 62.5. And now this is where we wanna do inverse tangent. So now I'm gonna say that theta equals the inverse tangent of 50 over 62.5, okay? And so you're gonna to need to use your calculator, make sure you're in degree mode, and I want you to punch that in and get your answer. I'm not gonna write it down here, I want you to actually do some work because I've done most of the work for you, and I want you to figure out what that angle ends up being, okay? So now we've answered the first question, right? We know what the angle is. The angle will be whatever this answer is here. The last thing we need to do is we need to figure out 
what distance or where should he put, where should Ricky put the ball? And I wanna leave the video there. I don't wanna actually solve that part. I wanna see if you can figure it out, okay? And it's very, very possible to figure it out. And I want you, my hint is, is that you're gonna wanna make a ratio of sides. It's my big hint. You wanna make a ratio of sides. If you can make a ratio of sides, and my, my hint is you wanna put some side over some side equal to the other side over the other side. And then remember how we cross multiply and solve? That's what you wanna do, okay? So I'm gonna leave the video here. I hope this helped you at least get the angle, but I wanna see if you can take it one step further to find out where does Ricky need to place this ball, okay? And if you do need more help, go ahead and shoot me an email afterwards. I can give you the next step, or maybe I'll create another video, we'll see. All right guys, I'll see you next time.